Welcome to a new season of A Skin Depth Convo. I'm Anna Kagaraikis. This is a show focused on educating and inspiring all those in the skincare and beauty industry. Now, coming up on today's episode, we have the entire Lyra Clinical team here to help us change the seasons as we focus on summer recover and fall renew, helping restore your skin from the harsh summer months as we start the fall. The ladies will tell you all about their eventful trip to Greece answer your questions and much more, but first a word from Lyric Clinical. Lyric Clinical takes today's skincare to the next level. Using cutting edge technology and the best high quality ingredients, Lyric gives you brighter, healthier, younger looking skin. With award-winning products, advanced education, and innovative skincare philosophies, Lyra Clinical is redefining aesthetics and offering superior products and treatments that produce remarkable results. It's beauty from the inside out. Be bright, be beautiful, Lyra Clinical. All right, we are extremely excited to have the entire team here. As always, we have our two expert hosts, Metaxia Delikas and Francine Kagarakis, but also joining them are some other experts, Brenda Cumming, and Anna Constantine. So welcome to the founders of Lyra Clinical. How's it going, ladies? Thank you. Great. Doing great. We're doing great. We're recovering from our summer. I mean, the summer has been, it's been an interesting one. It's been fun. It's been ups and downs, but there's a lot we have to get to today as summer is coming to a close and we get ready for the autumn months ahead. But for many, our skin is already feeling the impact from the heat, the sun, all the environmental factors. Now, the four of you definitely experienced all of that when you traveled to Greece this summer. So let's talk about your trip first. Why did you travel to Greece and what did you do? We're excited to finally get to the island of Hios and, that, and actually see the trees and meet with all our vendors over there. So it was really nice to be able to have the opportunity. But on the way to Greece, we also experienced some of the elements of the environment, for example, the heat and the fires. It was an experience. It was a really nice experience, but it was really nice that we we're all together as a team. And for, for us, we love to share the experience, what we felt, what our skin felt. And it's, it's just a really nice opportunity for us to share that with you guys. One of the first things we did is we walked up the Mamma Mia stairs up to that unique church way on top, but we did it as tourists. We didn't do it as normal people at nine o'clock. What time of day? Morning. What time of day? <laughs> One o'clock in the afternoon. Oh Why gosh. not? <laughs> How hot? You guys said record heat. So we talked about the record heat over there. How hot was it? Nuclear. <laughs> 115, 110, 110. Uh, nuclear. I was like walking in an oven. Houston yeah. is colder than, than that. 200 <laughs> steps up one way. And it hasn't had that temperature in 30 years. Of course. Of course. We were there. <laughs> And I kept feeling every step I was going up, my pigment got darker and darker <laughs> and darker. I was a different person by the time I got to the top. What is the name of that church? Ayos Yanis. It's in the island of Skopolo, St. John. Yes. And it's such a beautiful island because once you start getting up to the 200 steps, you see a view like no other. And the church is just beautiful. I have to give uh, Brenda credit. She had her hat on. I only had the sunglasses on. And I probably needed to wear the hat, Brenda. This is why it's so important to wear your, your hat. My melasma came right back when I oh, hit no. the top of the mountain. Well, Metaxi made fun of me on that hat. And that hat's <laughs> been the Camino with me. That hat's been in many countries. And you can tell by looking at me, I don't tolerate heat very well. If that hat could talk. Yeah, that's right. That, that had a personality. I mean, yes, you it put did. it on and you had your hair up, you had your hair down, but it kind of molded around your head, but it was adorable. And with the sunglasses, it was like you were on a mission to get on top of that Movie hill. star. But I got jealous of your hat because I bought one in the same island because I thought, wait a minute, Fran has a hat, Brenda has a hat, it's my turn. So I bought a hat on the island too. And I was completely covered the whole time. You could tell my skin, completely covered. Well, how did you cover your skin, Anne? Uh, I did Oh, you didn't cover your skin. I covered, actually, I lied. I did cover it wearing the SPF shirts. I kind of did that. But coming down off that hike, I was completely drenched. Mm. I, I did double on my sunscreen. I was really good with that. And I tried to wear my hat, but not as religious as Brenda. I well, none of us, I mean, none of us got sunburned. No. So that, I mean, that's the best. Sunscreen protects against sunburn. Our melanocytes were all being challenged. Oh, yes. All our different, in all our different Fitzpatricks. Oh, yeah. They were definitely put to the test, but, you know, we have the right products to uh, prevent that and to correct it, right? Record heat in 30 years. 
it's 45 celsius which i did i learned what is it 130 oh, we knew that by heart by yeah yeah but it's not just the SPF, it's the heat. I mean, okay. melanocytes respond to heat and that type of heat and the altitude, I mean, it was really intense. And so, yes, we were double SPF, you know, and we're wearing the clothes, the proper clothes, but the heat alone was something that our, our skin and our hair had to experience. So before you prep for the day, what were things that you did to your skin to kind of prep it? And is there anything you did at night to kind of help it? Uh, we put our pro light on every morning with our yeah. vitamin C on top of that. And I, I wear the BB bright because it has our butin in it and it's sheer and it just, I just like it a lot. I was putting sunscreen on every 30 minutes. They saw me. And I was actually using my phenomenal SPF hydrating because I love that product and it's yeah. really does protect, but I also use BB on top. So I found that I needed it all because my melasma was right there. And so I was using both with a hat and sunglasses. And yes, I did take bottled water and pour it down my neck every time I could. <laughs> I doubled up also my SPF. I doubled up with the hydrating and then the BB tint. My BB tint is my favorite, but I actually put a little bit more BB tint than usual because I really felt the layering was important too. Because of the BBs, they actually trans... Um, transfer the heat. So I like the fact that I had a little bit more BB on. And they're so breathable. The heat, my yes. mm -hmm. Yeah. So I did classic tint. I actually did classic tint. And then on top of my classic tint, I did BB tint. So I ended up doing that combo. And then I did a lot of just tons of moisturizer after. So I used a lot of body nourishing oil. I felt at night when we were coming back, I was so dry. So I did a lot of that. I used the mineral, um, our biohydro mineral mask at night. I didn't, I tend to do that because I was really dehydrated during the day. So I was doing that at night. Yeah, we slept in the hydrating mask and that nourishing oil put in my hair. I detoxed at night with refining mask. I was trying to detox because I also had to use the nourishing oil from head to toe because I was burning my hair all over the place with my uh, curling, what do we call that? Uh, blow dryer, dryer blow powder. dryer brush. How did you do that? It fell apart because she she burned out the <laughs> she burned out the electricity. <laughs> they didn't the like the converter. <laughs> and I put it on medium. Metaxa kept telling me, why'd you put it on high? I go, I did not put it on high. I had it on low, but it melted. Oh, and <laughs> yes, it in your melted. hair. And so at this point the hair was out to here. So I had to use nourishing oil from head to toe just to take care of what was going on with the hair. Looking at our Fitzpatrick here, if you notice the lighter the skin, the more SPF necessary for like for Brenda and me and Fran. And then Anna, on the other hand, she has more melanin going on. So she would ha not be as concerned because her skin wouldn't be as sensitive or responsive. So this is a really good visual of seeing how all skin Fitzpatricks have um, some advantages and disadvantages. So really, you know, we kept the melanin from coming up where all of a sudden Anne was getting a golden tan. So there's oh, a difference, Anna but was I can tell you. Bronze. Yes. Anna was beautiful. She looked beautiful. She still I does. Mom's color. But I also put, I think out of all my trips I've had, I didn't get sunburned and I right. reapplied the sunscreen a lot. I mean, that's was, the most important is not getting yeah. sunburned. Right. And yeah. reapplying it and constantly moisturizing it, but reapplying it on my face, reapplying it on my body was key. And you not only did it to yourself, but to your kids as well, right? They were following with the Lyra sunscreens in their pockets. They were putting it on their face themselves. Oh yeah, definitely. And they didn't get sunburned either. We were really good with sunscreen. And I also noticed too, I tend not to drink a lot of water, which is bad, but I noticed I was drinking tons of water. Like the water that we were going through those water bottles, we were going through tons of them. And I think it was just because the heat was so extreme and even then we had them in our bags, we had them in our pockets, we had them in our jacket, you know, our, our stuff. So I think a lot of us were drinking tons of water. A big issue that was going on in Greece at the time and something that's been going on in the West Coast, especially here in the United States, is fires. There's been a lot of fires everywhere. So you also had to deal with a lot of smoke. So does that do anything to your skin? How does that affect your skin? We went to the Parthenon and on the way to Athens, there was fires on both sides of the freeway. As we're going into Athens, we're seeing the smoke and the heat. It was just horrible. And everybody was saying, not a problem, not a problem, keep going. It's not gonna be a big deal. So what happened is we ended up, when we went to the Parthenon, it was very, very hot. So they closed the Parthenon 
between one and five due to excessive heat. That's how hot it was. So we decided to go between five and seven. We're up there still dying in the heat with hats, sunscreen, sunglasses, everything. And what we find is as soon as we touched our faces, there was ash on our faces from all of the fires. So it was a little tough, even at the Parthenon at five at night. And the other one is when we went to Meteora, we went over there to see those beautiful monasteries. And as we were hanging off cliffs to take pictures of our Lyra products, as we almost fell off cliffs, That's to go ahead and get some great photos. Oh, oh, Johnny. Yanni, please, please, Yanni. Oh my God. And I grow up up there. <laughs> no, don't look at this. Be careful. I felt more like my face really needed a good scrub every night. Especially after Athens. Athens was very, very smoky. So the environment was very tough on us. But it's a big, big city too. It's a lot of cars, mm -hmm. a lot of emissions. Yeah. So Absolutely. what do you think is the best thing to do to tell so scrubbing is a, probably the best thing to do at night? Like how often should you scrub your skin? I mean, you don't want to over exfoliate, but yeah. at the same time, when you have um, you know, that type of environment, you have the smoke on your face, the ash that you're talking about, how often should you be doing it more? Well, Fran was using the um, ice refining mask. Right. And then what Dots. I did is mm -hmm. I would let it dry and then I'd put the polisher on top and then I'd take them both off together, which was very, very nice because that helped it put the hydration back in and also brought mastica to my skin, which we absolutely loved when we went to Hios. Well, I liked my Mystique cleanser and the polisher because mm -hmm. I needed that exfoliation, but I was kind of dry. My skin was dry because it was exposed to the elements. So I would combine them together and actually do a, like a manipulation with the polisher and kind of clean up my skin. I felt that the, that Mystique was really important to keep the balance because it's the air conditioning, it's the sun, it's the heat, it's so many elements going in the water. The, your skin goes through so many different changes. And what's really cool is that having a few products and, and actually playing with them and manipulating them for whatever your skin needed was really a benefit. Like Fran did an alternative treatment. I did one, I'm pretty sure if you ask Brenda and Anna, we use what we liked and then combined them with certain things or you know, for cleansing, I would probably say cleansing your face is twice as normal, but we probably would cleanse the face maybe the third time if necessary, depending on the elements that we were exposed to. You know, when you go swimming, you would cleanse your face again not just wait for morning and night. But to have good skincare is really important when you're doing your you know, summer vacations because that really helps you go through this without that dry pigmented surface and rough surface because there's a lot of inflammation going on. And there's a lot of elements that we don't have in our regular day-to-day -day, um, lifestyles. But and I have rosacea, so my whole... You guys didn't see that come up too bad, right? No, you did fantastic, Brenda. You really did really I good tried because... I feel it. Anna, did you do anything different? Yeah, so for me, I did the bioenzyme cleanser. Again, different. I did the bioenzyme cleanser, but I also did the bioinfusion. So I was comboing that. And, and for me, that was enough. But I mean, we kind of separated a little bit. We did a lot of the boats and the ferries. So the same thing, you kind of go into the air conditioning thinking it's different, and then you're outside and there's not that much difference. So just making sure that just comboing that, constantly washing our face. We did a lot of the beach. So I was washing my face three, four times a day. I felt like it wasn't enough. So just doing a lot of washing my face with bioenzyme and then using bioinfusion was my friend. So I think I use that a lot. And then at night I tend to use more of that hydrating or more of that, you know, the lift cream. I was doing that combo too. But I felt like I was washing my face a lot and drinking a lot of water. You know, another fun thing when it comes to traveling is the food, especially when you go to a different country. It's always fun to find the different cuisine, the hot spots. What was the best thing you ate in Greece? What was the food like? I, I know First what of I all, traveling, traveling with my partners, I've been waiting uh, to have this trip. It was epic for lack of a better word. I, I can't wait to do it again. And um, it was so much fun. And I've never been there and appreciated uh, the country. I thought the people were absolutely the sweetest nicest welcoming i think they were so happy to have um tourists and um metaxia's husband's family anna's dad's family were just very gracious but um we ate and we we ate a lot 
Uh, probably about every two hours, it became a joke. And I just started putting it on Instagram because if you saw it, you see the, the table, but honestly, all the food was fresh. Um, I had seafood I've never tried before, uh, the vegetables, the fruit. I mean, it was just, it was epic. It was amazing. And I loved it. I just, I can't eat like that, but I enjoyed it and I didn't get any weight. So I was kind of happy, but I think we sweated it out and we walked everywhere. And we even had ice cream most nights, right, Fran? Oh, we sure did. Well, of course, you know, we, had the, we went on the Holy Grail uh, mission uh, looking for Luca Mamades. <laughs> And I'm gonna have Fran talk about that because I didn't even know what they were. If you would have just said fried donuts, I would have got it, but they're not just fried donuts. The food oh, was before Fran, you go talk about it. I have to say, I have to say Brenda was so gracious because we were in on Scopolo, the island of Scopolo, and one of the family members gave her some fried fish <laughs> oh, and yeah, yeah. sardines. <laughs> and, and I'll be honest, she's good. You better you're good. And all of a sudden he goes, Do you want to try it? And she's of course, you know, I mean she's a trooper. And so all of a sudden, she put this sardine, fried sardine in her mouth. She didn't flinch. She swallowed it, but she turned around. She, her eyes popped up. I can't believe I ate that. And it was so, but you were so good, Brenda. You you, you were a trooper, I have to say. I don't even eat that. No, it just <laughs> reminded me so of good. my uncles in Ireland. You know, they would they would have done the same yes. thing. Yeah. 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 That, and, you know, seeing cool. fish all intact with the head and the eyeballs and <laughs> talking about, they brought us a whole fish before we were going to eat we ordered all these hors d'oeuvres and they're supposed to last 45 minutes and then they bring the fish and brenda goes are they going to leave the fish head on i go absolutely oh they're my god eating the fish head oh they said it was the best part yeah um well why don't you tell them about the time we ate at 1 a.m that was like <laughs> i think that was on scopolo wasn't that on scopolo after the flat tire 1 a.m oh Yes, yes, yes. And we're it was in the crowded. Bathroom. There were still people out there eating. We were all squeezed in one car. <laughs> A uh, car that only holds four people. Yes, yes, but there's five. Uh, there was five of us in the car, and we were following somebody on a motorbike. With no lights. No <laughs> 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 no lights and for well we did get a flat tire didn't yeah. know what to do at that point but they came from the from Lutraki, which is down from the bottom and they brought it up to glossa they changed it and then we went to the other side of the island of course to eat this is where one o'clock in the morning came and in. they were waiting for us no big deal yes but the beautiful part the food was absolutely phenomenal we were yeah. eating right next door to the water and you can see the fish right there and as Brenda said, the food is nice and fresh, but it all comes down to the attitude. We're relaxed. We're happy. The air was beautiful. We were under the stars. Absolutely wonderful. And this is something we have to remember. You, we have to always be enjoying everything and relaxing and digesting and walking. And as Anna said, water all day long. And we drank a lot of water. As Brenda went to Greece, and Brenda, what did you say? What drink were you looking for but you enjoyed besides Mustika? Vodka? Yes, she did. Yeah, she but I only had it twice. <laughs> she she goes, they don't have vodka here, and the waiter comes running for her. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yeah. So he came running. So they did want to make sure that they pleased you there. Oh, uh, they were, it was they were great, gracious, and I felt like I was beginning to understand the language. Can't speak it. I was trying, but no, Fran Natasha can lay down some Greek like nobody's business, man. It's like you were born there. <laughs> it was great but it you was. understood everything i said you I understood, understood i just can't say it. i was getting i've been around you long enough but yeah um, but it was cool she understood everything she understood especially like you said when we were sur the big search was we went on uh lutraki on scopolo and they made us some beautiful lucumabis so we, we started there but then we needed to go to athens to find the professional lucumabis <laughs> up north they don't have lucumabis we didn't so we that. went I didn't know that, but we learned about it from Kalambaka, but we ended up in Athens. We looked everywhere. And finally I said, no more. I don't care. I don't want to even see a Lukumada. I'm done. We did not find them. Metaxia goes, I'm going to find them. This We're is what she find does. Them. She asked every stranger on the street. <laughs> I was totally right. like, oh my God, what is she doing now? And she asked every person. And this was in the Monasteri, a little area. And in this area where there's a ton of people during COVID, ton of people, we found the best lucumades in Athens called lucumades, where they have them filled with custard. They have 
salted caramel. They have ice cream. I've never seen such great. See how excited caramel. she's getting? Oh, oh, they're so good. I'm jealous. My son-in-law did tell How me. many did we order? Well, you're the one that counted them. I just kept going. We ordered 60 and there was five of us. Yes. Anna, did you have two trays yourself? Remember? I had one tray that you guys brought to me and then yeah. I won't lie, my text and I went again. Oh! <laughs> Same place! When oh, was that going to come out? Yeah, we found out something is secret here. Yes, and we went and, and we had some. Well, did you have the uh, ones with cheese and spaghetti sauce on them or did you have the sweet ones? We say tradition, like where we liked the traditional one. So we did the traditional one, which was fabulous. Why don't, why don't you all have that? You know, that should be a franchise here. They have it when you go to the Greek festivals. I know, and, but. You could eat it every day. Yeah. That's the problem. Oh. <laughs> yes. That would be the it But it was a, a combination at the festival. Sometimes I feel like you get the doughy or you get more of the crispy. Yeah. This one I have to say was the combination of both. I've never mm -hmm. experienced where it was the crispy and the doughy together. It was like perfect. They were fabulous. It was the holy grail. That was almost the top off of the whole trip. Was... But you know what? I gave up on them. I'm glad Metaxia hunted every person down on the corners and found it because Brenda was able to experience the best lucumadas ever in True. Athens. And we went down some alleys to find those. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you did find obviously some of the best food out there. You ate amazing food, but what you also found were the masika trees in Hios. So in the island of Hios, if you haven't heard the whole story, uh, the background about Masika, you can go back to one of our previous episodes. We definitely talk about Masika and how the trees work, the folklore behind the island of Hios. Uh, but tell us about that experience, what you guys did there and why it was important. Oh, it was absolutely beautiful. We went there and we were able to see all the trees we adopted. I think Metaxia talked to Lena and she had arranged for us to go there and we were able to see how they cultivate the mastica, the trees have veins in them and every branch, you're only allowed to hit it or cut the vein of the tree four times on a branch. And if you do it more than four times, it will not give you the mastica. And during this time, July to September is the time that they harvest the mastica. We were able to see and experience these and the, the pictures that we're gonna be sharing are absolutely beautiful. But what a wonderful, wonderful way of cultivating them. It, they are so natural and so very special. And what we did is we also went to the museum, but we have found that when the mastica comes out of the tree, it comes out to repair the cuts on the tree. So the whole idea with this resin, it is there to repair. So what it does to the trees, it also does to us. So it is absolutely phenomenal. And those trees, trees are what, hundreds of years old? Yeah. And they just yes. regenerate, but... The way they cultivate it, that's a labor of love. Because Absolutely. they have to hand do it and it takes the whole village to get out there and start extracting that resin. What I got out of the Bastija trees is that there is a technique of respect of the history in the past, mm -hmm. but that really being involved and hand picking and doing all that cultivation, like Francine says, but coming up with something special. And I think that's what we pride ourselves with Lyra is not just getting something and put it together. It really takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and you know, taking a lot of pride. And I think what we came out of these trees is there's a lot of pride in this in one ingredient. And we do that with all the ingredients that we put into our products. We really look for the best. Like you could find qualities of ingredients, but we always go for the best quality of an ingredient. We take time, we research it, but we really are passionate in love with it. So when we put it in our formulations, we are really giving you the best we can offer in the market. And I think that's what stands us alone in the skincare industry, because when you go in and take all this time and to fall in love with a tree that gives you ingredients, and that's just an example of one ingredient, we do take a lot of time and really pride ourselves on what we do. And we were able to visit our adopted trees. How yeah, many we do were we have? So like 40, 40 something? 60. 60 trees, yeah. Fantastic. And you actually, you can follow a lot of the journey um, by going to lyricclinical.com, go to at lyricclinical um, on Instagram, you know, follow all the social media pages because there's a lot of great pictures from the trip as well. Um, but you guys had an amazing trip. It was beautiful, absolutely wonderful time. I'm so excited for you. But once you got home and now we're getting to the end of summer, what did you do to treat your skin as you got home? And what did you do to help kind of recover like yourselves? Let me jump in real quick because we've been teaching aesthetics for a long time and there is a peeling season that we, we would advertise with. Whatever 
fun or whatever exposure you have during the summer months, this is a great opportunity to go back and kind of do treatments to kind of correct your skin or bring your skin back to what it was before you went on the summer vacation. So for us to experience firsthand being together and seeing the weathering of our skin and their hair being dry, for us to come back and offer these treatments and offer these products that can actually bring you back and have you not have longer uh, lingering pigment or lingering dehydration, your home care and your clinic uh, treatments are so crucial right now so that you look fabulous for the fall and for the winter and for the holidays. So the opportunity that we have to do these things, the first thing I did is did a lactic peel head to toe. And then I went and got a haircut and got my hair, a hair conditioned. But I am actually better than what I did before I went on summer vacation. That experience, that friendship that I felt, that, that this being able to be with my partners and, and experiencing that inside, I felt very emotional and, and very happy. And then putting my skin back to where it was before I went on vacation, I feel it's a whole circle. So you definitely need good home care and good clinic treatments when you come back on vacation. And that was just my take on that. Agreed. Me, I came back, looked at the mirror and said, ooh, <laughs> time and it doesn't matter because I'm going to deal with it. One thing Metaxia said, I agree with her. When you have a good time, it shows. Even though you might have pigment, it's gonna, you can take care of it. You have to have a good time. It comes from within. Looked in the mirror and said, okay, we're going to have to deal with that. But we had a great time. We smiled, we laughed, we ate, we drank. It was beautiful. And came back and realized now I got to deal with the heat melasma that I'm trying to deal with. <laughs> And as Brenda said, ProLite's a best friend, but it came down to starting the Vitabrite. Then it went to the lactic. And then as you're going, you start doing more and more treatments, and then you see it getting lighter and lighter. Yeah. And as long as I'm hydrating and I'm taking care and managing my pigment, I'm perfectly fine because this season is all about managing my pigment and putting back in to make sure my skin is healthy. Um, I did Vitabrite when I got home and I uh, just kept on my same regime, just trying to keep my inflammation down. I was really surprised that it wasn't um, too bad really at all. And I think like you said, to your point, it was just a, an internal release too, that we all got to spend quality time with each other and we laughed and we walked and we, and we ate healthy. And I think eating healthy contributes to um, decreased inflammation. So staying on the ProLite and vitamin C and doing that Vitabrite when I got back and getting my nails done because they were trashed. Yes. And my hair trim, I felt, um, I felt myself again. Same thing. I came back and did the Vitabrite. I think I was really dehydrated. So I came back and did that. Um, again, I was more with the body product. So I did a lot of nourishing oil, tons of nourishing oil, but I mean, I think you nailed it just going and, and being together and experiencing each other, going to the beach, just having that inspirational moment. And then you come back and you're ready again, you're recharged. And that was the whole point, being recharged, being excited to be back home and, and also enjoy our moments was really huge for me. And then tons of ProLite, tons of, you know, Mystica cleanser, a lot of hydration, but um, just being together and enjoying each other and being recharged was a big one for me. One thing that's funny is when in Hios, when we first went there, we had Mystica water, Lucumia, and Mystica cookies. It is all over in Athens. You have, you can see the Mystica liqueur, you have the gum. I mean, you see seen many things. I oh, I screenshotted some craft cocktails with Mystica yeah. that <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna try. I just need some Mystica. <laughs> no, we tried them at the Athens Gate, remember? Every oh, night we, yes. had, a we that, had a different one. We did, we're on a rooftop looking at the Parthenon and ordering Mystica Spritz. I think they were called yeah. Mystica Spritz. Nice. Oh yeah, we had, it was fantastic. Sangria sunrises with Mystica in it. Oh yeah, that's awesome. I have to say for me, Lena, who is uh, the owner of Adopt a Tree in Hios, she was so excited to try our oil, Mystica Beauty Oil. And she's been writing us on a regular basis saying how beautiful it is and how she wanted us to send more. But for her to kind of give her seal of, of approval that she loved that product more than anything else meant a lot to us because it's a full circle because, you know, you have that gift from that tree, that resin, that teardrop, and then all of a sudden you see that 
finished product with that beauty oil and for her to be really almost in tears of what she saw that we did with this ingredient um, for me was very rewarding. I felt that we all have worked really hard, but it was definitely a good experience to see someone that, you know, I mean, they're exposed to a lot of uh, vendors who buy Mastija, but she was so impressed with what we did with it. Really and we do rewarding. have to thank the Mastija Growers Association because they opened up their doors even during holiday. They, they were very gracious. They showed us a lot of their marketing gave us all the latest information, which we will be sharing with all of you. So we were very thankful for them too at the same time. They were awesome. Well, now we move on. Unfortunately, the vacation time is over and we move on to the next season of our lives, which coming up right now is the fall. So after all this, how do we prepare to renew in the fall? Field season, but we also are releasing our phenomenal treatment guide and exactly what you're saying it's all about renewing the skin and getting started again and taking care of that skin so renew is part of our philosophy for this season i think our guide as you're going to see it coming out soon our guide is about the renew and it means more now especially when we've personally experienced it it's all the fun treatments that you can actually have a hydrating result or benefit or it just these treatments are based on what we've experienced on our summer months and you know and our experience on our vacation but it's all about this exciting techniques and, and procedures that you could offer to anyone walking into your clinic with a beautiful result so you know our treatment guide is I think special this time because of our experiences and our input on this um in this guide and Anna has worked really, really hard designing the images on it. I could tell you that there's a lot of love and a lot of time put into these guides, but this one was really special because we really had all of us a lot of input into it. And it makes you too holiday ready. I mean, come on, it's coming up. I mean, now you go to the store and you see pumpkins, so it's ready. So I feel like holiday ready is coming. Um, You'll see a little bit of our sneak little peek of our um, holiday box, our luxury box. So I think that's exciting. Just being able to get into the holiday spirit and just be able to enjoy the image and enjoy the protocols that they always talk about and spend hours and hours perfecting. So I just think that's exciting. Just being able to do that and, and try these treatments because we put a lot of love in them, a lot of love and a lot of hours. You know, Anna, you work so hard on that treatment guide too. What was kind of the biggest thing you wanted to get across to people when they open up the treatment guide? Just to be able to, like they said, to renew, to be able to be holiday ready, to be able to see these images and to be able to be passionate. A lot of our science and nature, we've talked about that many times and you've seen a lot of it in our marketing, but just to have that science and nature, we normally don't combine those elements together when we're doing the guides. It's normally seasonal. So this is one special guide that we combine the science and the nature. So you're going to see a lot of the beakers with the plants. You're going to see a lot of, you know, diff different ethnic skin. You're going to see a lot of uh, just comboing a lot of the stuff that we talk about in one guide. So I think it's pretty special. I think this one's going to be a special one. And, and it's really nice because we're going to be able to really show how exfoliation and putting back into the skin can work at the same time. We're able to do that in these beautiful treatment guides. You know, I don't think a year ago we could have guessed where we'd be today in terms of the pandemic. Uh, let's talk about where the beauty industry is right now. Also, you know, aside from just going to Greece earlier this summer, you took part in some skin shows. I know Las Vegas, Dallas, some others. What was it like traveling to take part in these events now with COVID? The beauty industry has been busier than ever. It is absolutely insane. It is crazy. We're busier than ever. Lyra's busier than ever. Med spas are busier than ever. People, I don't know, they're just coming out of their isolation or and they're ready to get things done. And I will tell you one of the biggest things that's helped our industry is people being on Zoom for eight hours a day because they have eight hours to tear their cells down <laughs> and then they want to seek uh, treatments like for their skin. So that has been crazy. We went to a trade show Metaxi and I in early May in Vegas, and it was masks and it was social distancing, and they limited the amount of attendees and amount of vendors, and um, it was still expensive uh, with less attendees, but I felt like people were still a little leery, and then we went to Dallas, and it was still a little bit like that, and then we went to Vegas, and it was like somebody opened the barn door, and it was crazy. People were just so happy to get out and it was just a huge show for us. And then Anna can, and we prepped Long Beach for the same 
type of response. And I'll let Anna address that because she was at that show. Yeah, Long Beach was, again, more cautious. Everybody was wearing their masks. Um, there was attendees, but not as, men, not as many attendees. But again, just being more cautious, being more aware, you know, a lot of the vendors were wearing their masks or they were wearing their shields. Um, people were going out. I still feel like they want that, they want that experience to go out. I feel like they want to interact. I feel like they want to talk, but they're doing it more cautiously, right? They're being more prepared. They're wearing their mask where Vegas, you guys were saying that they're barely wearing their mask. Yeah, just to see that in a month, it was a big change just to see from, you know, Vegas to Long Beach. But again, I still feel that people want to go out, but they just want to be a little bit more cautious and be safe. I think what happened was in June, we were preparing to take the masks off. Yep. So at this point, we were all looking for that July 4th where we're able to take the masks off. We we're preparing for that. So most people were vaccinated and we were very excited. And again, people were excited to go back to Vegas. So it completely changed at the end of July going towards um, August. Yeah, there is a shift, but the shift is because of being more cautious and not knowing what is going to happen. The good part about it with skincare is that people are looking at themselves with Zoom. People are home and, and able to do some more home care that is going to benefit themselves. So, I mean, there is definitely a growth in the skincare industry because now we have more time to do things at home and our products are really at home treatments. So there is a big benefit for whoever is gonna use home care and skin care to, you know, to utilize the best in the market so that their skin looks the best when they do the Zooms. We want that, we wanna feel good, we wanna look good. And that has gotten even more busier. I mean, the season has gotten more busier because of that. True, and every state's different. We have to remember every state's gonna be different the way that people react, the way that a lot of states don't wear masks, other states do wear masks. Right. And I think to home care, you said it, people now are doing home care because of COVID. I think people are more aware of it. So they're buying their home care products and they're doing their home care products and they're trying to go in to see their esthetician or their professional, but also really maintaining that skincare and being able to do it more often now, I feel like they did in the past. Yeah. And we're going to keep continuing to keep everybody updated on what's going on, give as much information, also see what it's like, you know, basically boots on the ground, everybody here, uh, what it's like when you go to shows, just being within clinics, medi spas, whatever, we'll keep you posted here on a skin depth convo. But we do have some questions from fans. So if you have any questions that you want to email the team here, just send it to skin depth convo at lyricclinical.com. That's skin depth convo at lyricclinical.com. So get involved in the conversation with us here. You can also go to the social media pages again on Twitter. Uh, Lyra is also on Instagram. We have a Facebook page. But our first question comes from Teresa. What's your favorite summertime Lyra treatment? Please share your protocols and also what's the most problematic skin condition you get in the summer? I think the Vitabrite is the best treatment you could do before you go on vacation, when you come back on vacation. Why would you do it before to give your skin its balance and hydration and then coming back from vacation, you're again putting it back in, the balance, light exfoliation, but balance of hydration, keeping your melanocytes really happy and less threatened. But I think what's really important is to be very consistent on your home care because home care is crucial. Having your face cleansed twice a day and keeping a good balance home care routine is really beneficial. And SPF is your number one product yeah. in the summer. As we know, and we used all summer long, SPF is your number one product. I want to say that's how we came out with the summer guide. We have some beautiful um, no downtime summer um, protocols in there. Right. The Mystique Elite. Like Metaxia is saying, is you absolutely it anytime. Um, anytime. Mm -hmm. And the BBs. I feel like don't forget those. Yeah. I feel like the BBs are even comboing the BBs. Or even if you don't wear, you decide you just want to do a BB and then the afternoon wear your sunscreen. I feel like those are another important part. And body, body nourishing oil. I oh, yes. swear by that. I use it all the time and then I put souffle on top of it. But just being able to combo those and being able to try different things is really important. Right. And firming, body firming lotion. That's another favorite. Definitely love using that one. Now, our next question comes from Kish. Kish asks, what are all the options for offering a hydrating product besides Hydra Infusion? Biohydra C, our oh, number Bio one product. C. That is for everyone. There's not one person who cannot use the Biohydra C all year round, even people with rosacea. And the Mystique Beauty Oil. 
The beauty oil, I was going to say the same thing, Brenda beat me to the punch. The beauty oil for me is, is all in one. I mean, I love that beauty oil. I use it all year long, me too. but especially during the dry periods when my skin's going through a really dry period, um, inflammation, like Brenda says, that beauty oil is like no other. Hydrating SPF. Yeah. We have a lot yeah. of products that address hydration. Lift cream. Lift cream is great too. I love the lift cream and the hydrating uh, SPF. I love that one as well. Uh, Shannon is the last question. She asked, what pregnancy safe products do you recommend? Biohydra C infusion, everything from the Mystique line and the Bio line. I would also recommend, don't forget your pro light. Sometimes people who are pregnant tend to have pigmentation or they're dealing with melasma. So being able to use the pro light, um, I think is also a key. And one more thing, Anna, you don't have to put one application. You could use, like, for example, put the beauty oil and the lift cream. You can actually combine products to have a layering effect on your home care when needed. So you can actually play with these products. Sometimes layering is really a good treatment in itself. Partnering them up is a great idea. Yeah. And if there's any questions, I would always re refer their uh, patient to their doctor if there was any questions while pregnant. Great, a lot of great answers, everybody. And again, if you would like to email us your questions, go to skindepthconvo at lyricclinical.com. Uh, so just email us there, skindepthconvo at lyricclinical.com. We'll answer your questions here because we've got the best experts. They're the best, they know it all. So they're happy to help. Uh, but before we go, is there a product you ladies would like to showcase? Oh, our one product that's a big one for us is our bio infusion. Oh, by the way, <laughs> let's go. Hold that up. Hold on, hold that up again. Yeah, let me see it. Hold it up. Hold it up. There oh, it is. Beautiful. Oidal silver and gold with hyaluronic acid. It's a beautiful oh, ad. Thank you, Anna. Ad. Nicely done. Very nice. I was admiring it before the podcast. <laughs> Anna, you're so humble. Talk about it. Uh, I, I love that. I mean, I think, I mean, that's a good product. I feel like we've had it forever and I feel like it's just, there's so much more and it's kind of like what the ad says, so much more. I feel like we don't advertise it enough and I feel like everybody should try it. Everybody should use it. Um, just a great hyaluronic plus more product. Yep. We all agree. Oh, fantastic. Well, ladies, this has been an amazing show. Happy to start off the new season of a Skim Death Combo on the right foot. A great start to this season. Thank you again so much to Francine Metaxia, Brenda, Anna for another informative show. And thank you to all of those who ask questions. Keep sending them in. Again, email them to skindepthconvo at lyraclinical.com or follow all of Lyra's social media channels. And of course, thank you for listening to the show. And we'll talk to you soon.